What is the perfect daily dose of topical finasteride if we want to maximize our hair gains while minimizing our risk of side effects? The problem, again, is that big brand companies, they're selling topical finasteride dilutions at 0.3%. That's 60 times higher than Hi, this is Rob from Perfect Hair Health, and in this video, we are gonna be diving into the science behind topical finasteride. What is the perfect dose to maximize our hair gains while minimizing our risk of side effects. I can tell you that it's probably nothing close to what the big brand telehealth companies are prescribing people. So if you're using topical finasteride, I highly recommend you watch this video. I highly recommend you get your DHT levels tested to just see how much is actually going systemic. So let's get into it. For really quick background, finasteride is a type 2 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. That means that it inhibits the conversion of free testosterone to its metabolite dihydrotestosterone, also called DHT. Now, there is an overwhelming amount of data linking the hormone DHT to the progression of male and female pattern hair loss, and even more data suggesting that if we can lower this hormone, especially in our scalps, we can improve pattern hair loss. This video is not gonna dive into the specifics there, but really quickly, we know that men who lack type 2 5-alpha reductase enzymes generally are protected from baldness. That implicates type 2 5-alpha reductase and specifically that hormone DHT in the baldness process. We also know that men who are balding tend to have higher levels of DHT in their scalps versus non-balding controls. We know that when we expose hair follicles to DHT in vitro, their dermal papillae cell clusters undergo apoptosis or cell death and that creates miniaturization opportunities in subsequent hair cycles. Finally, we also know that the drug finasteride, a type 2 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, the topic of this video, when you're taking it at one milligram daily over two year periods, stops the progression of pattern hair loss in 80 to 90% of men. It's a very strong response rate. And secondly, leads to a 10% increase in hair counts alongside some significant hair thickening. The combination of those two effects, on average, nets people 20 to 30% more hair volume. So the DHT argument at an observational level, at a mechanistic level, and at an interventional level is very strong. And that's why finasteride is generally preferred as the go-to drug. It's the FDA-approved option for people fighting this condition and wanting a long-term solution. The only problem is that oral finasteride comes with a risk of side effects. And depending on what study you're referencing and the way that you decide to define the term side effect, generally somewhere around one to 15% of people taking the drug will experience some sort of adverse event. And it's believed that finasteride side effects are because the oral formulation reduces DHT levels and 5-alpha reductase activity basically everywhere in the body. So when you take the oral medication, you're lowering DHT levels, not just in the scalp, which is the target for androgenic alopecia, you're lowering it in the blood, in the prostate, you're having effects on neurosteroid genesis, you're having impacts elsewhere in the system, and those impacts are believed to cause the side effects that are associated with finasteride. So this begs the question, can we harness the power of oral finasteride without having to reduce DHT levels everywhere in our body. As in, can we just reduce DHT level locally at the scalp and in doing so reduce our, maybe even eliminate our risk of side effects from the drug? Well, this is the pipe dream of topical finasteride. Instead of taking the drug orally and reducing DHT everywhere, we instead just apply it locally to the scalp skin, thereby localizing its effects and getting all the benefits with no risks. At least that is how I've seen most big brand companies selling topical finasteride position it. But there is a massive problem. Finasteride has what's known as a dose-dependent logarithmic effect on DHT reduction. That is just a fancy way of saying that a little bit of finasteride can reduce just as much DHT levels in our body as a lot of finasteride. In fact, while finasteride is prescribed orally at one milligram daily to fight hair loss, dosages 80% lower than that at 0.2 milligrams, they can reduce almost the same amount of DHT in the scalp and in the serum. Even dosages as low as 
0.05 milligrams can knock down DHT levels over 50%. That's 1 20th of the dose that men take daily to fight hair loss. It's 1 100th of the dose that they use, which is 5 milligrams, to lower prostate size. And this dose-dependent sensitivity curve, it poses a big problem for topical formulations of finasteride. Why is that? Well, because if just a tiny bit of finasteride that you apply to the scalp perforates into the scalp's microcapillary networks, it's going to travel systemically, and you might knock down DHT levels just as much everywhere else in the body as if you were to take oral finasteride at one milligram. That defeats the entire purpose of paying a premium for topical finasteride, which costs at least $30 a month, whereas a year's worth of oral finasteride can be acquired for $30 total. And that brings us back to our main question. What is the perfect daily dose of topical finasteride if we want to maximize our hair gains while minimizing our risk of side effects? In my opinion, it's the dose that improves hair parameters, but has the lowest possible effect on blood levels of DHT as possible. Because we can use blood levels of DHT, also known as serum DHT, as a surrogate for how much finasteride is affecting DHT levels elsewhere in our body. So what is that dose? Well, before we get into the dose, let's talk about what the word dose actually means here, because everywhere online, it seems like people talking about finasteride use the terms of percent dilution, 1% topical finasteride, 0.3%, 0.15%. I can tell you that that is not the right way to think about this. Instead, we need to think about topical finasteride in terms of its daily total drug exposure. And that's not acquired through dilution percentages. It's actually an equation. It's the percent of topical finasteride times the milliliters applied times the frequency of daily application. And then we can use that number and convert it to milligrams to know the exact amount of finasteride that you are putting onto your scalp on a daily basis. To emphasize just how important it is to control for milliliters and the total milligrams of exposure, check out the results of this 2014 study. A single one milliliter application of 0.25% finasteride reduced blood levels of DHT by 25%, while two milliliters of the same exact formulation reduced blood levels of DHT by 70%. That's the exact same as oral finasteride. Again, we need to account for dosing. And on that front, we've got some good news for everybody. Over the past week, my team and I have compiled all the studies ever published on topical finasteride, the carrier vehicles that were used, the hair loss outcomes measured, and most importantly, the effects of topical finasteride on both scalp levels of DHT and blood levels of DHT. Then we did all the calculations for you and turned those calculations into a chart that you can see right here. On the left-hand side, we've got your total daily exposure to finasteride in milligrams. On the right-hand side, we've got the actual formulations used in the studies. For instance, 0.25% finasteride at 0.4 milliliters versus the same formulation at 0.2 milliliters. And then these blue lines here show the total reduction to blood levels of DHT given these daily exposure volume. Again, this is our best surrogate for systemic absorption of finasteride. And in this chart, across all of these studies, we see a really clear pattern. The more topical finasteride applied, the more you will lower your blood levels of DHT, the bigger the systemic absorption, even when you increase your dosage by something as small as 0.1 milliliters daily. I mean, the jumps here are pretty staggering, but there is a silver lining. The very first study ever published on topical finasteride, way back in 1997, they tested a 0.005% dilution at two milliliters applied daily using alcohol and propylene glycol as carrier agents. That equates to a 0.091 milligram daily exposure of finasteride. That is 90% less than the typical one milligram dosage you are prescribed orally for androgenic alopecia daily. And that study found positive effects on hair parameters over a 16 month period. And guess what? They also found no statistically significant effects on blood levels of DHT over the course of that study. In other words, the leakage of topical finasteride from the scalp, it was so minuscule that blood levels of DHT basically unaffected. 
And throughout that 16-month study, nobody ended up reporting any of the side effects that are commonly linked to oral finasteride formulations, things like sexual dysfunction, sometimes brain fog, you name it. So what does this tell us? Well, first, it tells us that all of the topical formulations here in this chart, they can produce results because the one at the very bottom is improving hair parameters. That's really important. And as far as additional hair growth as we climb up this exposure scale, we just don't know. But secondly, that at 0 0.091 milligram daily exposure rates, that's the very bottom right here. We can still see positive effects on our hair, but we can also dramatically minimize reductions to blood levels of DHT. So. If you really care about getting hair growth from finasteride, but you absolutely want to minimize its systemic effects on hormones, this formulation is the one that I think you should consider getting from your doctor. The problem, again, is that big brand companies like Hims, they're selling topical finasteride dilutions at 0.3%. That's 60 times higher than the 0.005% dilution we're talking about. And they recommend a set number of sprays to their patients, but according to our knowledge, there's no guidance on how many milligrams of finasteride are actually in a single spray. Again, we have to think about consumer behavior here. People have a habit of over applying topicals. That's why you'll go through your monthly supply of minoxidil way faster than 30 days usually. And with topical finasteride, as we demonstrated earlier with the studies, we cannot over apply it or we're gonna risk defeating the purpose entirely. In fact, we saw this with a similar formulated spray in a recent clinical study on topical finasteride from 2021, where the participants used a spray formulation of 0.25% topical finasteride. Again, that's really close to what HIMSS offers. And they sprayed it anywhere from one to eight sprays daily to cover their bald spots. That's, according to our estimates, 0.114 milligrams to 0.912 milligrams of daily finasteride exposure. That's a huge range. And the average reductions to blood levels of DHT throughout that entire study, across all participants using the topical, it was 35%. Going back to our chart, that estimates about 0.04 milligrams of finasteride went systemic each day for the participants on average. That's all it took for a 35% drop. Again, 0.04 milligrams, that's nothing. So we have to be really careful here. A single spray can literally make or break the difference in paying a premium and all this extra money for topical finasteride. But with the right formulation, applications that seem to expose you to less than 0.1 milligrams daily, they can get us results and without significant hormonal modifications in the serum, which is our surrogate, again, for systemic effects. So what do these formulations look like? Well, that one study used 0.005% topical finasteride at two milliliters daily. The two milliliter volume, I would say that that's more appropriate for people who might be diffuse thinning because you can spread the topical out over a larger surface area since it's two milliliters. If you have more localized hair loss, just at the temples or the vertex, one milliliter at 0.01% would net you the same exact exposure volume. That's 0 0.0912 milligrams daily. It's just formulated differently. That daily exposure volume is what I think you should be putting on your scalp if you truly care about minimizing systemic absorption, but you want at least some hair promoting effects. One more note here, for everybody online that's saying one milliliter of 0.1% finasteride corresponds to one milligram of exposure, that's wrong. That's a rough estimate, but the actual milligram exposure is gonna depend on a ton of different factors. Things like the density of the carrier agents that are used with the finasteride, and even the temperature of the formulation during the application. And yes, I understand that these differences are minor, but they matter because the difference between an additional 0.01 milligrams of finasteride going systemic can mean that you're not seeing any reductions to DHT levels, or you're seeing a 15%, maybe even a 20% reduction to DHT levels. So if you follow these guidelines, you get these formulations, you stick to the usage parameters, you're gonna put yourself in a position for success. The final thing worth mentioning here, in our analyses of all of these studies, especially that 2021 study, we estimated that anywhere from 4% to 35% of the applied finasteride to the scalp entered the serum. That is a crazy variation. And what that means is, if you're really serious about using topical finasteride, if you really want to invest in this product, you have to invest in getting blood DHT levels done before and after starting it. Because that way, you'll know in real time how the topical is actually affecting your blood hormones. So 
Here is what I recommend. First, ask your doctor if they'll submit to insurance a serum DHT test for you. The answer is they probably won't, which leaves you with the only other option, which is direct to consumer lab testing. If you're in the US, the lowest price DHT test that we've been able to find so far comes from Merrick Health. I think that that is Derek from More Plates, More Dates' company. Their pricing tests around $150. We are not affiliated, but according to our search so far, they are the lowest cost option. And I think that they're a good one to go to if you're looking for this granular data. If you're willing to spend 30 to 40 bucks per month on topical finasteride, it's worth doing these tests to know just how it's affecting levels elsewhere in your body. So here is exactly what you should do. First, order two serum DHT tests. Next, arrange for a blood draw for your first test. Try to book it in the morning between 7 to 9 a.m. Try to do it while you're fasting, then get the test done. You'll find out the results in a few days. That night, start applying your topical finasteride exactly as prescribed. Within seven applications or seven days, you should have a pretty good preliminary picture of the systemic effects and its accumulation, if any, the topical might be having. So then schedule your second blood draw seven days after your first appointment, or in this case, after your seventh application of topical finasteride. Then get your blood drawn at the exact same time of day as the first appointment under the exact same circumstances. We're talking fasted, try to get the same night's rest beforehand, same foods the day before, same exercise levels. Try to control for all of these extraneous factors because serum DHT levels fluctuate like a roller coaster daily. We're talking 20 to 40% swings. They're highly sensitive to test timings as well as exogenous factors like sleep. So you have to stay consistent if you want to get good data. When you get the results of both tests, compare them. If the differences in DHT levels range less than 15%, in my opinion, it's unlikely that finasteride is having a biologically significant impact on your serum DHT levels. That implies that you're managing its absorption effectively. If it's higher than that, consider lowering your dose slightly, then retesting in a week or a month's time. Finally, try to periodically test your serum DHT levels regardless of your results. If you forget about these recommendations, it's a possibility that you're gonna start hammering the topical, you're gonna to feel great, you're gonna retest months later, and maybe your serum DHT levels are gonna be down 70%. That's a lot. Well, guess what? If you were not getting side effects and you were doing that unknowingly, then maybe consider switching to oral finasteride and saving yourself a few hundred dollars every single year. Then again, if you start to get side effects and you see that your blood levels of DHT have tanked, that's also a great barometer to know at which DHT level these tend to set in for you so you can taper accordingly. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a full article on this topic, which I'll link below. It's all free. I hope this helps you out and I look forward to reconnecting in the next video.